What is up guys, it's Troy at the Full Setup, back with another video for you and today we have an unboxing of another deep cool cooler. We are going to review the Captain 240 Pro, this is an addressable RGB liquid cooler. Um, I did an unboxing of this a couple of months ago if you want to see that in more detail. But in today's video we're going to take a closer look at the cooler, I'm going to take you for an up and closely in a second, I'm going to show you all the included accessories. We're going to do an install, we're going to do some gaming, we're going to do some other benchmarks as well. Going to do a bit of overclocking and then I'm going to come back at the end of the video with my final thoughts and feelings. Also, I'm in a new chair today, so huge thank you to Boolies for sending this over. There'll be a review on this chair coming in the next few days, so make sure you come over to the channel and check that out. Anyway, let's take a closer look at the cooler. The Deep Cool Captain Pro All-in-One Liquid Cooler takes the RGB from the Captain EX and cranks it up to a thousand. The previous 12 volt RGBs have been upgraded to 5 volt addressable multicolor spectrums, and the cooler also comes with two Deep Cool CF addressable fans, as well as supporting AuraSync, RGB Fusion, ASRock Polychrome, and MSI Mystic Light. The Captain Pro also comes with an included controller that hooks up to an eSATA port on your power supply. But one thing I know is that a lot of you have been confused with the difference between 5V and 12V RGB connections, so I'm going to make sure I cover this at the end of the video for you. Anyway, back to the Captain Pro. It's not just the 2200 RPM pump block combo that's had a stylish upgrade. The 240 aluminium radiator definitely makes itself known, and I'm not just talking about its gorgeous new styling and Chrome Gamer Storm branding. The first batch of Captain Coolers did have some leaky units, and Deepcool have been working hard for three years to make sure this never happens again. And to the lower of the unit, you can find their new patented anti-leak valve. And I bet you're wondering, how does this work? Is it just a gimmick? Well, it's actually one of the best things to ever happen to AIO liquid coolers. Basically, inside the radiator, they have installed an elastic pressure relief bag. One side is exposed to air and the other is dipped in the coolant. So when the internal pressure exceeds atmospheric pressure, the bag will then be squeezed, which increases the system's internal volume. The increased pressure is then released, avoiding any potential leaks. But in a nutshell, it's just science, molecules, probably aliens. Moving on to the included accessories, and Deepcool have been their normal selves with including loads of well thought extras. The two included CF120 fans with RPM ranges from 500 to 1800 RPM look gorgeous and do a great job of keeping your system cool. They make themselves known when they're at their full 1800 RPM, but from 1250 RPM and under, your system will be extremely quiet. As for hooking up the fans, as always, Deepcool include their four fan PWM hub. This newer version is slightly slimmer and has a sticker for fixing into the rear of the case. One thing to note is that Deepcool don't actually provide you with extra screws for doing a push-pull configuration, so if you do want to do that, you'll probably have to buy some off of eBay or Amazon. Over to RGB connections then, where I'm using the included controller for today's video. The plus and minus buttons cycle the effects and the middle button changes the speed. It would have been really great to see brightness as an option as well. But I imagine most of you are going to want to hook up your cooler to the motherboard and Deepcool have provided both the 5 volt cables that you'll need. So there's the standardized one that's used on Asus and lots of other motherboards and there's also Gigabyte's older connection cable in there too. Now previously to add all your fans, coolers and RGB strips you would have to use Deepcool's great but rather messy daisy chain cable. I was a big fan of this cable as it always left you with one header free to add another daisy chain cable. But now you get their brand new RGB hub which allows up to 5 RGB connections but you don't have to be limited to 5 devices. The output socket allows connection for another hub or a daisy chain cable. Let's get the cooler installed. Before we start, it's worth noting that the tubing on Deepcore AIOs is rather short at 31cm. Now they fit perfectly fine in the front of Micro ATX and Mid Tower cases but you are definitely going to want to top mount this cooler if you are putting it in a full size tower case. Now the Captain Pro comes with loads of mounting gear for basically every Intel and AMD socket you could require, but today I'm going to show you the install method for Intel 115X and AM4 sockets. Now I wouldn't worry about taking your PC apart, you can install this cooler into any pre-built system, there really is no need to disassemble your rig. Start by inserting the longest screws into the included backplate and position the backplate into place. You now want to take four mounting nuts and fix the bracket to the motherboard and make sure that you have the protective stickers facing towards the motherboard. Now fix on the mounting bars, the smallest are for Intel and the larger are for AMD. Fix the bars down with the four included nuts, now you only want to finger tighten these and do remember, never over tighten a cooler outside of the case as this can cause your motherboard to bend. Time to add a small amount of thermal paste, now Deepcool do provide some in the box but as always we're going to use the MX4 that Arctic Cooling do provide me for the channel. 
time to fix the cooler down and you will need a screwdriver for this but again remember do not over tighten just remember the golden rule for a cooler as soon as it bites it's tight with the captain now in the system you can really see why this cooler got the pro label it really is a thing of beauty in previous videos i stated that the captain ex was my favorite deep cool cooler as i'm a total sucker for white builds and if i'm honest it still is the one for me based on just the systems that i like to build but when i reviewed their castle cooler i said that this was the hands down best looking rgb cooler on the market and for me the captain pro tops it but I'd be really interested in what your thoughts are, so let me know in the comments section. Well, fancy RGBs and anti-leak tech are all well and good, but we need to see how this cooler performs, so we're going to run some benchmarks for you. Now, for all of that B-roll footage, you've seen the fans in the pull configuration, but for these tests, we're going to put them in a push configuration. Now, there is a full specification list in the description for you if you want a better look at all the parts used today, but I will be testing with a Ryzen 2600 at a mix of stock versus overclock settings for you. As for the GPU, I'm using an Asus RTX 2060 for the gaming tests. Now, I'm using the Asus Turbo Fan Profile for you today, and I always like to use this one because I find it keeps the system very silent for just light tasks, but then it gives you a nice bump of fan speed when things start to get a little bit toasty. I'm running Battlefield 5 at 1080p low settings to put lots of stress on the CPU. And as you can see, the Captain Pro has no trouble keeping the CPU cool with temps in the low 40s throughout. As for the fan speeds, they were averaging at 850 RPM. Honestly, at stock settings with the overkill cooler on my RTX 2060, the system was virtually silent. Moving on to something a little bit more demanding at stock settings then, so we've been running the IDA64 stress test for about half an hour, and as you can see again, the temps are super low, averaging at about 50 degrees. As for the fans, again, the system was running super quiet. We were having averages of about 1100 RPM throughout my testing. What about overclocking then? Well, getting the Ryzen 2600 to 4.2 gigahertz takes an extreme amount of voltage. I've had to crank it all the way from 1.2 volts to a whopping 1.425 volts with load line calibration set to level two. All this extra voltage is only gonna create one thing, heat. But the Captain Pro still crushed the temps when it came to gaming. Even at 4.2 gigahertz, the temps stay within the mid to low 50s with fan speeds creeping up to the 1250 RPM mark. And finally, IDA64 at 4.2 gigahertz and temps increased dramatically, but the Captain Pro still has no trouble with temperatures in the mid 70s. The only downside was the Asus fan profile maxed out the fans to 1800 RPM and the system did become rather noisy. So what I actually did was then set a fixed RPM of 1500 and I found the temps still remained at that 75 degrees. So there was the review then and as you can see, the Deep Cool Captain Pro 240 is just a beautiful looking cooler i love the look of this rgb cooler as i said there in the video i do prefer this to the castle cooler you may prefer the castle cooler but for me yeah best looking rgb cooler on the market at the moment deep cool do keep nailing it thermal scores are very good as well there's lots of thermal headroom in there if you want some overclocking or if you just want to run an incredibly quiet system this cooler has got your back but no product is perfect, so we need to do the pros and cons. Moving over to the pros and cons then. Well, for this bit of the video, I'm going to put all the pros and cons together. Normally, I separate it. We start with the cons. Then we move over to the pros. But I find a lot of this cooler's pros are also its cons. So first massive pro is the anti-leak tech. Um, it's a really well thought out idea. I definitely think it's going to work. Only time will tell. If this unit leaks, it doesn't matter if Deep Cool send me stuff or not. I will let you know in the comment section. But I think the tech is going to work very well. Where that could be a con though is because obviously the way they're marketing it, they're sort of showing it as, you know, all your other AIOs could potentially leak. We, we do know that. You know that risk when you buy an AIO cooler. So is that sort of saying that all their other coolers leak? I know it isn't and they are implementing this on some of their newer coolers as well. So the Castle V2 is going to have the same anti-leak tech as this. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to lie here. I'm not going to just defend Deep Call because they send me stuff we do know that some of the earlier captain units did leak but deep cool replaced it everyone's components if you sent them all the information over sent them photos of your system they replaced everything so that's very good that they did that and just my own experience again being completely honest here the captain ex i've used quite a bit never leaked on me i've got the deep cool baron case as well which has a built-in captain liquid cooler um that pc is at my girlfriend's house use that every day that's how my i5 8400 in it no leaks whatsoever going all the way back to their deep cool maelstrom i've had that about three and a half years now no leaks 
obviously no leaks out of this cooler and no leaks from the castle cooler as well obviously i'm just one user it's not like they're sending me specialist units like if it's going to leak it's going to leak I have never had a leaky deep cool unit, but I know a couple of people have. So it's really good to see this tech. So the next massive pro is in its name. It is the Captain Pro. It is an absolute thing of beauty. You know, this is one beautiful looking cooler, but you know, because it's called Pro, it shouldn't just be about the lights. It's using the same speed pump as the Captain. There isn't any more performance in this cooler when it comes to cooling than the Captain. And I would have liked to have seen a little bit more performance. Now, one thing you could say is that they could use the faster pump that's in the cheaper L240 or the similar price castle. Maybe it's that that pump doesn't actually fit in this design, but my testing has shown that there isn't really a difference between all those deep cool coolers. Most of them perform very close to each other. I don't have a controlled environment, but all my tests have always been within a couple of degrees of each other. So that faster pump isn't actually benefiting cooling, but me as a consumer, uh, you know, when I'm buying the pro model, I would like to see them use their fastest pump. But other than that, totally beautiful cooler. Now the next one for me is the tubing length. I've always been super positive that they use smaller tubing length. It's about 31 centimeters versus coolers like NZXT that use really long tubing. Like you don't want extra tubing that you find hard to position in your case, but it is just a little bit too short, especially when you have the fans in the sort of pool configuration. The 31 centimeters is a little bit short and where it's really a problem is actually on the AM4 and TR4 mounting brackets because you can only mount it one way. You can only mount it in the horizontal fashion. So this cooler is really best positioned in the top of the case. Now for Intel systems, it's not too bad because you can put it horizontal or vertical. To be fair, it was the same with all the captains. It's a great looking cooler. It's just the mounting bracket. The way the tubes to go in, it's just a little bit harder to position over something like that L240 or their castle cooler. Moving on to the next pro and con then, all the included accessories, the fans, the um, fan PWM controller, the new RGB hub, really like that over the old sort of daisy chain cable. I know a lot of you are gonna prefer the hub, it's magnetic as well, you can stick into the case. Decor always well thought when it comes to the accessories, but they are missing two things. Number one, the screws so you can put extra fans in. I know most liquid cooler companies don't provide it, but I think they should all provide screws to put extra fans. If you think about all air towers, like the Arctic air tower that I had in this before, there's always extra clips so you can put a push-pull configuration. Why not put the screws? And then the other con is the Deep Cool Captain EX came with an RGB strip because it was a more expensive cooler than the Captain. This is the Pro, so this is even more expensive no rgb strips so i'd like to see an rgb strip so you know basing on my pros and cons then it might be saying that i'm sounding a little negative about it but i'm not i think this is a absolutely fantastic cooler and i think you will really like it it's just there's a couple of little compromises that might not be for everyone <laughs> you'll never believe what happened right i totally forgot to end the video like i just edited it all down i was like where's that outro where's where i talk about the 5 volt and 12 volt rgbs for you totally forgot to do it so we're going to make sure that bit of the video is included so the reason i've left this towards the end of the video and not in the beginning is because i have explained the difference between the both in quite a lot of my other deep call videos but i do understand a lot of you still don't quite understand it so Basically, you have two types of RGBs at the moment that you can use with computers. You have 12 volt. These were sort of the original ones that were implemented on, um, on computers, basically. So what 12 volt ones do is they display one color at a time. So it can go red, then it will go blue, then it will go green, then it will go yellow. And it can cycle through those colors, but it can only display one color at a time. Now, 12 volt RGBs use a four pin RGB header. So what you need to do is before you're buying a motherboard, you need to go over to the specification list on the website and look at what headers it's got. So there's just the standard RGB one will be a 12 volt, you know, four pin RGB. Now they are not compatible with five volt RGB. So what five volt RGBs, they can display multiple colors at the time. That's how you're seeing the cycles on the captain that's not next to me now. But you're seeing the colors go through so you're seeing multi colors in one effect um, and like i just might have said then they do not they're not cross compatible with each other you can't plug 12 volt into 5 volt and you can't plug 5 volt into 12 volt and if you tried you're gonna fry your motherboard so they are not compatible with each other so to make sure if you can support deep calls 5 volt tech or other rgbs a lot of it now is being called argb um, so you can support that 
you need the 5 volt headers. They're referred to, as I said, ARGB. They might be 5 volt headers. They might be referred to digital RGBs or addressable. They're all the names that it comes under. And again, go over to your motherboard specification list. Have a little look. It will show you how many 12 volts they've got how many five volts now asus are starting to put it on more of their motherboards but it's more their high-end ones i haven't bought any msi or azrock motherboards in a while to know how they're sort of doing it is their labels gigabyte have been putting it on quite a lot of their motherboards even their lower end motherboards and motherboards under 100 pounds so if you do want lots of rgb headers gigabyte might be the one for you to go to but anyway we got there in the end i don't know if that made any sense to all of you but it's just you asked me a lot and I've answered it a lot in the comments section and it's I'm getting a little bit stressed to reply and now I don't mean to be stressed at you if I am replying to you in the comments section it's just I've explained it hundreds and hundreds of times so hopefully that explains to you the difference but anyway yeah the deep cool captain 240 pro love 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 that cooler I know I said a lot of its pros where it's cons but I love 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 the cooler so um here's just we're going to show some effects it's just all the lighting effects um just using the included controller play the music if you like the video make sure you subscribe and i'll be back with some more content very soon make sure you come and check out the chair review as well loving this chair it's all stormtroopy look at my speakers my stormtrooper looks fucking wicked